interpreting fold data. Okay, here we have a series of bedding readings plotted as poles. And so the first thing we need to do is find the best fit great circle for these poles. And we do this by rotating them round until we find a great circle that the majority of poles lie on or close to and drawing in this circle. Next we can use this to find the fold axis and this will be the pole to this great circle. So we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees. This is the pole to this great circle and it's the fold axis to the fold. The next thing we can do is find the axial plane and we do this by dividing the spread of the poles so in this case we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120 degrees. So our midpoint will be at 60 degrees. So mark this on. And to find the axial plane, we rotate this round to find the great circle that this point and the fold axis both lie on. We draw this in and this will be the actual plane of our fold. Right, so the next thing we can do is measure the plunge and azimuth of our fold axis. And we do this by taking the fold axis round the equator and counting in for the plunge, so in this case 10 degrees. And just put a mark where the equator is, rotate the tracing paper back round to north, and measure off the azimuth, so 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, no, 139. There we go. So we have a plunge of 10 degrees and azimuth of 139 for the fold axis. To get the strike and dip of the axial plane, we can measure the strike off directly. Uh, so 90, 100, 110, 20, 30, about 140 degrees. And to get the dip, we take this back round to north-south and count in along the equator. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 degrees. And we can see that it is dipping towards the northeast. And that's the fold axial plane.